Welcome back everyone to the yet another exciting series. In this series, we will be building REST APIs. To build these REST APIs, we will be using Next.js 13 as our framework and MySQL as our backend. In this series, we will not be only focusing on the local deployment. We will be deploying our code on the internet. We will use GitHub to deploy our code and then we will be using for Next.js 13, the Vercel platform and for deployment of MySQL, we will be using PlanetScale. In this series, we will be focusing on the beginners topics like data validation, error handling, responses, user inputs and queries. And later on, we will gradually move towards the advanced topics like cores, encrypted authentication, JWT authentication. Let us understand what is REST API. It stands at representational state transfer. Quite complicated, but it is simply a unique URL provided to you to get the resources over, all over the internet. The methods which we use to get the data or perform the CRUD operations are get, post, patch and delete. We'll talk about these methods in the later sections. One key thing to note is REST APIs are stateless in nature. So we don't need the session details, rather we need authentication details to make the REST APIs work. Let's understand how these REST APIs work. Suppose you are a client, maybe you are using a browser, maybe you are running a web application, maybe you are running a server. From this client, you need some calculation to be done external to yourself. So to perform that, you will do a HTTP request and that request will go to a server. This server will be performing the calculation on your request and it will also interact with the other resources. For example, it might look for the database which might be sitting locally or maybe on the cloud. Once the request is completed, we get the response back from the resources and then the server sends the response back to the client. That completes the lifecycle of REST APIs. Why to use the REST APIs? Basically, REST APIs are simple to make they are industry standard. They are scalable in nature because we don't have a, a single server. We can deploy it on multiple servers. And the last part is compatibility. It is compatible with almost every web language as well as other frameworks. Where it is used, you might ask. It is used across the internet. Mobile apps, web apps, enterprise apps, integration, and you name it. REST APIs can be found everywhere. So let us try to understand how does a REST API looks like. So this is the basic structure of the REST API. On the top, you can see there is a URL provided. We call that URL as REST endpoint. The next part of the URL is called as query parameters, where user can request a particular detail out of the REST API. The middle part, API slash users, this is called as API routes. There are multiple methods, as I mentioned, get, post, put, patch, delete. These methods are called as HTTP methods. Apart from it, the REST API requires headers. So these request headers contains the information which is critical to run these applications. For example, the authentication details, the content type details, what sort of values you are going to provide, all these are stored under request headers. The next piece of information is request body. For example, you are posting some data through REST API. You need to provide the body. So the request bodies go into the request body section. And we typically provide the content type. What exactly is the content we are going to provide as a payload? Last thing, once we kick off this API, we get a response back from the server. And that response is called as API response. Now to make this REST API, there are various steps. The first step which we have to do is we have to create a brand new Next.js 13 application and we have to install Prisma. Prisma is nothing but an ORM to interact with the databases. The step two is to create MySQL database on planet scale. And step three is to connect planet scale MySQL database to our Next.js application. Enough with the theory. So let's get started with the practical part. As I mentioned, the very first step to begin with is to install Next.js 13 application and then install Prisma. So I've created a folder REST API YT YouTube in my system and I'm going to open the terminal now. In the terminal, we have to write down the command npx create next app 
at latest dot so we are working in our current directory do you want to install the current package i'll proceed with y would you like to use typescript no yes lint yes tailwind yes src no app router yes import ls no and our application should be ready in a second so now our next is application installed let's try to install prisma to do that we have to use npm i prisma okay the prisma is installed now let us go to planet scale website and try to install a mysql database if you want to know more about the prisma i have created an entire series about next year's crud operation using prisma and mysql database do go watch that series on the right hand side you should be able to see the link so now we are on the planet scale website on the planet scale website you have to get click on the get started to log in once you create a login you will get invited to the screen you have to click on the create a new database this will be a empty database you have to provide the database name i am going to say rest api yt the region which you want to select your data center as and i'm going to select our hobby plan which is free please note you have to provide the credit card details for the first time you will not be charged but you will you will it is a mandatory thing to provide let's click on create database at the bottom our database will be created we have to click on the prisma as our language or the framework and then it will be creating a password you have to keep a note of this username and password so i'm going to store this somewhere so that i don't lose it next time now let's configure our prisma application we have done the first step npx prisma install now we have to run this command npx prisma init once we run npx prisma init the prisma will be initialized and you should be able to see one more folder called prisma under that folder we have got schema.prisma file which gives us all the details about the client and the database let's go back to the planet scale and follow along the next steps in the environment file we have to paste the url provided here so i'm going to skip this for now in the schema.prisma file we have to copy this code and paste it give it a quick save in the command line we have to run this command npx prisma db push but before that let's create database url in our .env file let's go to .env file i saved the username and password let's try to paste this the username will be this one the password will be this one at the rate aws.connect.psdb cloud the database name rest api yt and then ssl accept is equal to strict now we are done with the database url give it a quick save and we should be able to override now we are connected to the planet scale database how to validate it from the previous video i have created three models users to do and tags i'm going to paste these models and then i'm going to push these models into the planet scale mysql database okay now i've pasted the users model here the to do model and the tags model the to do's model is a child of the users model and tags model is a child of the to do model give this file a quick save and let's open our terminal again in the terminal we have to type down the command npx npx prisma db push hit enter it should be connecting to our database and it should be pushing all the models into our database now you can see our prisma is connected to our database and our models are pushed to the planet scale let's go to planet scale dashboard and see whether our models are deployed or not so this is the planet scale database on the right hand side you can see four tables are deployed if i click on four tables you should be able to see users to do tags and tags to do 
This is basically the relational table between tags and to do. Now we have completed all three steps which we detailed out at the beginning of video. In the next video, we'll be focusing on how to use this database to create REST APIs and perform CRUD operations. If you are liking our content, do go to our channel and do subscribe. Share it with your friends and post comments. Thank you so much.